And joining me now is Olga Landrish. She's the research manager for the Alliance for the Great Lakes and was in that story that we just saw. Olga, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thank you. So are we finally starting to see the information about microbeads and what's actually happening to the environment around the Great Lakes? Are we finally starting to see some people noticing this, especially because Illinois putting a ban on those products? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... The, the issue around microbeads definitely sort of made big news uh, in the past year or so. Um, and Illinois took the steps to, to ban the products that contain them so that we could see less of, a, um, of them flowing into the Great Lakes and waterways um, in Illinois. Um, but it's really just a one type of a plastic type of item that is um, ending up in the Great Lakes. And so it's important to, to take the steps to, to protect the Great Lakes from micro bees, but also other types of plastic debris that um, inadvertently ends up um, polluting the Great Lakes. All right, so go ahead and tell us. We've heard about micro beads now, but what else should we be looking out for? What else is actually making its way into the, to the system of, of birds and fish who are in the Great Lakes right now? Talk to me. Sure, yeah, so um, Alliance for the, Org for the Great Lakes organization where I work um, has a stewardship program that involves tens of thousands of volunteers around the region in um, beach cleanups, uh, in the program called Adopt the Beach. Um, and our volunteers who go out to the beaches, they also um, collect the data that on, on what they're finding. So they're tailing up all the cigarette butts, all the plastic bottles, all the bottle caps, all the uh, forks um, and plastic spoons that they're finding at the beaches. And um, all that data is sort of in a public database that's um, accessible, but we're f what we're finding, you know, very slightly by location and the distribution um, depends on whether it's a highly urban environment or it's a little bit less developed but we mm -hmm. do see a lot of types of items that are associated with recreational use um, a lot of uh, cigarette related uh, litter it's usually the number one item everywhere um, we see a lot of food packaging and um, food related items like bottles and cans and cups um, and then, you know, just a, a variety of all sorts of different items, um, ranging from balloons to, to toys to um, some fishing-related gear from, from place to place. Do you think that people don't realize what they're doing if they leave just one fork from their picnic on the beach? Is it really going to make that big of a difference? What kind of awareness campaign do we need um, to tell people about what's making its way into the Great Lakes? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> a really good question and a really tough one. And I don't know that there is an answer that will address, you know, comprehensively, one, one solution that will address it comprehensively. And each uh, community will probably have to find a way that works for them, it, which it will involve sort of working with the, the local community partners and health departments and, and beach managers, um, waste you know, reduction uh, professionals who will find the sort of the a way to, to address it. But we all definitely have to be more mindful about what we leave behind, what types of products we purchase, what, um, what the footprint of all those products is, and if there are opportunities to use, to move away from you know, single-use plastics um, and go towards you know, something that can be reused multiple times, it's always gonna be a helpful step, a step in the right direction. So tell me about, I think a part of the, the awareness would be visualizing for people and showing them actually mm -hmm. what has been recovered from the Great Lakes. And you've been able to do that through an art exhibit. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so this is actually a partnership between Alliance for the Great Lakes and an organization that is based in California co called the Five Gyres. And they have uh, explored this issue not only in the Great Lakes, but in the oceans as well. So um, they've put together um, as art pieces some of the things that they found um, in the oceans, in the gyres. Um, and we've added some, some of the information about what has been found in the Great Lakes um, and to sort of show that in a, in a visual format. So there's... Um, a traveling exhibit that's basically making its way around the region um, and it contains um, 
some interesting eclectic sort of mix of items. Some of them are made out of um, recovered mm -hmm. materials, um, sort of showing masks of I various individuals who have been involved in, in the research and sort of making this, this an important issue to, um, to be addressed. Um, some of the pieces are recovered sort of fishing nets, um, bo pieces of, of boats that have been collected. Um, and then banners, informational banners, sort of showing where some of the stuff has occurred and what the impacts are. What is some of the reaction that you're seeing from people who, who see this art? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, really interesting, it's really interesting to observe people because I think it's something that gets uh, pe people to react pretty strongly. And without, you know, I, I guess some of them see for the very first time what is what's out there you know once it leaves our shorelines it's difficult to visualize what what happens and this is an opportunity for people to see what what the the impacts are once it leaves our our hands it'll be interesting for people to be able to see here at great lakes week here in grand rapids olga landris thanks so much for joining me i appreciate it yeah thank you